particular state of need. But if you look at uh, Ukraine as a whole, not because of the increase uh, in consumption, but because of the reduced uh, access and the reduced uh, consumption, the overall impact of Ukraine in, in these sectors is actually positive. So it should not be on uh, petroleum and coal sector, but on the energy sector. Yes. yes. Because uh, if I recall correctly, for uh, indigenous uh, energy production, the contracts usually state that the producer is exempt from all taxes, except income tax, so that uh, there should have been no effect on uh, changes in the excise tax for. Uh, primary production of coal and petroleum. But in the case of uh, also referring to the impact of uh, inflation, which is also related to Dr. Manassan's presentation, I think there's also a large impact of uh, international prices. So that uh, we would have already shut prior to the implementation of train because of uh, in large increases in world uh, prices, much more than uh, increases in excise tax on petroleum products in that day, so that uh, high rates of inflation, say, in 2018, might have been attributable both to increase in excise taxes as well as variations in uh, international prices. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Another question from the audience. Okay. So let us have, let us uh, have uh, the question from one of our viewers. Okay. Um, from Desner Baez. For a more complete analysis of the impact of green, can the CEG model be tweaked in order to take into account the impact of higher public infrastructure investments? given that 70% of the incremental revenue from train will be directed to public infra-investment. So, would you like to answer? At least, I think, uh, I think that refers to the study. Well, one thing, when we presented the study, one of the comments is maybe just to include the impact of infrastructure uh, spending on the, on the economy. But yet, we wanted to do that, but unfortunately, uh, we, we were not able to do so. Uh, uh, the next part of our study is, is to actually look at the impact of infrastructure. But I think there's already a study, a CG model that came, a uh, study that came out, I think, uh, see Dr. Toroto presented in the PS, no, the combined impact no, of all of these tax reports plus, plus eight plus. So I think the uh, one who asked that question can also refer to that study. But in the case also of the impact of uh, uh, global prices on, on, uh, on you have, uh, but this, it's not part of the study. One of the scenarios also are simulations that cannot be made. You know, so it's also to, to simulate changes in, in global prices. You know. And uh, actually, we uh, did that plan, but we did not include that in the paper. And, the increase in inflation is even much higher than what I presented. Um, Follow-up questions, sir? Yes, uh, there, uh, I would think the CGE should uh, have specificities that would uh, reflect uh, the impact of uh, price fluctuations. Does it have? Unfortunately, this is uh, the model that we run is a static uh, CGE. I mean, we can, yeah, it's not dynamic, so we, we simulated all of the sort of what would happen event, I mean, the, the end, or uh, sort of the, the but, uh, it can be tweaked, but I think we need a time, and that time that was just given us to, to do all of these uh, simulations. If we had more time, we would do it. Maybe consumption of petroleum products is uh, relatively realistic whether the price is high or low, consumers would have to purchase fewer. Yes, yes, Dr. Manasseh. On another point, just the earlier question on the impact of build, 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 train and build, build, build. I think at this point, uh, 
you, I, I think you have to parse that question because impact of clean revenue, muna, you have to get the revenue and then you have to build, build, build. But you can build, build, build without raising taxes. I mean, right now, based on what we know so far for 2018, the tax state is lower than projected. So, but build, build, build continue so far because, I mean, it's there in the works because government has also um, decided to have a higher fiscal deficit target. Diba? So, you shortfall mo dito sa revenues from drink, kinocompensate ng higher fiscal deficit. So, so I just want to nuance that a bit. Pusibli makita natin na mataas pa din yung infrastructure investment or at least tumataas upward din. Dahil we have it's not necessary to pay. May we hear from the delegate department? Uh, hello, Mitch from the Department of Finance. Uh, just to give one information on the tax state uh, uh, on train uh, from last year. Actually, uh, we have exceeded our target by 8%. Uh, we expected um, our target was 63 and the, the the take was 68, the revenues from the was 68 bill, 68 bill, 68.4 billion. And on the individual, uh, on the compensation uh, or income taxes, we actually, uh, the, the reduction in revenues was actually lower than what was expected. So there's some kind of um, efficiency gain. Um, and, uh, and, going to my, and also an update on the, um, an additional cash transfer as of uh, March this year, uh, 9.2 million out of the 10 million targeted uh, beneficiaries were already distributed. So, what happened to the 800, uh, uh, 800,000? These are the, one in the, the ones that are in the Gita areas, and also there was also um, a de delay in the in providing uh, an additional cash transfers to. Uh, senior pensioners because uh, they have to review the list. Remember that the UCT was divided among uh, CCT beneficiaries um, and uh, uh, non-CCT beneficiaries but below the, the, below the 15 percent decile and the senior citizen uh, pensioners. And now my question. Uh, so uh, for uh, it seems, uh, if, our uh, if our understanding is correct, uh, the, 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 the model puts a uh, strong constraint on output with the inclusion of the energy composite. That, so that when you tax any of the energy, um, energy inputs, the, it will eventually dampen output. And um, thank you for mentioning the paper of uh, Cororacon and uh, Kyongko, uh, they, they use the same CG modeling, uh, the same uh, 2012 um, uh, IO uh, matrix, but then the results were uh, the opposite of what you got. Uh, essentially because, as you pointed out earlier, they included the, 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 the impact of the revenues, uh, the, the impact of revenues on infrastructure, which I think is explicit in, 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 in the law also. Um, the next, so my question is, uh, given that the, that the energy efficiency is from 2012, which was the base of the I.O. table, the energy efficiency of, this, of, of different sectors has, has improved uh, based on DOA data. Uh, what would be the effect of this on your model? And for uh, Dr. Manasan po, um, uh, why would you abs uh, why would we abstract uh, the UCT from the from the analysis? Given that UCT uh, taxa uh, taxation is uh, also uh, is also a distribution as much as it is a 
uh, the new generation. And, and also that uh, UCT is, uh, in fact, explicitly uh, part of TRAIN. Uh, that's all. Thank you. Can we start with Dr. Anderson? Yeah. I think when I said these are the numbers uh, with regards to distribution abstracting from TRAIN, I just want to emphasize that without the UCT, regressive siya. More regressive siya. I, I think that's the point. And the UCT will be used to compensate that. Ang, ang point ko lang is, okay, regressive siya without the UCT. UCT is supposed to compensate. But then, hindi naman, from what I know, you said that up distribute, but that is not clear to many people na nakabigay talaga na ganong na, na, nabigyan yung 9 million because from what we know only the 5 million in the 4 piece ang nabigyan no March but maybe hindi namin alam lahat um, but I want to go back to your point na 63 hindi ko mapun up yung na 63 billion na yung total uh, revenue gains from train. Um, I thought it's more than that. Because, um, and, and I'm referring to what is listed in the BESF of 2018. I'm uh, right now. So maybe by component, by component. But anyway, I, I think, I, and here what I want to point out is it's what makes this discussion murky is the fact that the targets keep changing. The revenue targets keep changing. So when we look at some baseline, we say, ah, kula, or may shortfall, and then midstream napapalitan ng napapalitan. And, and I, I think that's, that's something up for discussion. I'm not contesting, but I know for a fact na yung revenue take na, na sinasabi is based on the BDS. Maybe, maybe yes, it's learned from Good afternoon, Paul. Uh, from the Department of Finance. Um, I think we just need to uh, adjust some of the numbers that were presented earlier, especially on the um, estimates, because uh, yung po 60 billion plus, um, may adjustments na po yun because we were looking at the um, components of the train that haven't yet been passed um, in 2018. So, we have to make certain adjustments. And of course, may ayan po yung counterpart na targets for the area of the views. And then, uh, on <laughs> And on the second point po siguro ma'am, um, yun po kanina yung question ninyo, nasan yung repeal at section 86 po sa tayo? Um, the repeal is actually an enumeration of the VAT exemptions of the different special laws na wala mo sa tax code kasi nasa outside po siya. So are we, are we okay? <coughs> We're going to your action please. I think part of the point of the, I think, uh, both presentations, I think we just have to watch out really of the revenue take. I know that, I think in one of the, on, I think that we recently, we have on uh, the US, also this, this, uh, the issue of, the issue of excise taxes, uh, and the recent shock talk, uh, and so I think if, if the objective really is for the excise and additional collections for excise and value and the taxes to, to offset any declines in personal income tax. I think, uh, and 
really not sure if, uh, at least from the simulation that they're in, it, it might be difficult not to, to uh, uh, there will be some difficult offset. So maybe that, that should actually uh, be monitored well, especially the uh, people are paying income tax, uh, paying income tax on the yeah, correct. Um, actually, uh, when we were crafting the entire package um, and we're looking to offset the supposedly um, losses from the personal income tax, we're looking really at different components, which unfortunately are both, some of which that we need. That's why, um, kung yung match talaga yung estimates on the revenue loss, it wouldn't really match the revenue take. At a, at a certain point, hanggang hindi nagatapos yung entire building package. And yung estimates lang po dun sa individual income tax, yeah, uh, I believe uh, binanggitin po mo siya is um, higher po yung same because you're using a different, I think you're using different takeaways. Whereas the DLP is using the BLR. So, you know, the question now of the energy mix no, in the, the input output table. The, the input output table doesn't contain any uh, distinction between uh, sources of energy. So, we have to, uh, well, it's in the paper, but I forgot to mention it in the uh, uh, presentation. That we use the energy mix uh, that's available in the uh, uh, for 2015. So, that's how we have divided uh, energy uh, product and uh, electricity. Uh, and then there's a distribution sector. So I don't, know, I don't think it will uh, the change in the year. Of course, no, as, as uh, the energy mix also includes, I think it's much, much better than uh, so We will see uh, for the rights now. May we hear from the others, please? Yes, sir. Uh, hi, good afternoon. Uh, my name is AJ Montesa from Action for Economic Reform. Uh, we're a civil society organization, and I actually wanted to give more of a comment, if that's okay. For, um, but there's a question in there. Um, well, I, um, to be transparent, uh, our organization generally supported uh, train uh, because we did agree with the laudable uh, intention of it to update the tax structure, which was decades uh, behind already. So for us, we did find that the final result of train was a mixed bag. I mean, there are obvious losses, which uh, both of you mentioned, the, uh, the regressive automobile tax uh, structure uh, was a missed opportunity because supposedly automobile excise taxes are supposed to be a tax on the rich, but the resulting structure made it uh, more regressive. Um, and um, as Dr. Manasan mentioned, the documentary stamp tax was some uh, mostly questionable. Um, but there were also obvious or not so obvious gains. And um, this is very controversial. I think uh, most of us view, um, a lot of people have issues with uh, petroleum and fuel excise taxes. Um, but um, a lot of people also view it as um, a gain. Because number one, um, well, we work in civil society. There are several groups clamoring for this because as studies do show that we aren't taxing coal and petroleum as high as we should. Um, so there are there is a stakeholder support for this kind of tax, but it also validates the economic academic position that it's a more regressive tax, and I think that's something that was shown also in both papers that um, taxing uh, fuel and petroleum actually um, benefits uh, it doesn't benefit the rich more. It's actually a more progressive form of taxation. But one surprising thing that I found in both papers was that um, uh, this was kind of offset or modeled by the inclusion of the. Uh, personal income tax, which I think was surprising for me. Uh, number one, you have to consider the political economy. It's very hard to pass um, taxes like um, petroleum and fuel excess taxes, because even if academically you can argue that it's it's a good tax, um, politically it's not a very sexy tax to pass. So there's kind of an offset that needs to be made. We're going to increase uh, prices, but we'll also have to um, lower taxes on income. I think that's the compromise that the government tried to make. But the problem that, that we identified in, in Dr. Tony's paper was that it exacerbated the inflationary effect um, because not only was there an excise tax on fuel, but the increased um, income, take-home income, um, actually 
uh, introduce a demand pull effect on inflation. And because uh, petroleum products are mostly consumed by the rich, right, um, it pulled prices even more um, upward. But it also worsened the progressivity of, of the tax reform as a whole. So uh, my question is, uh, for Dr. Tony, were you able to sort of do uh, an analysis of each um, tax uh, reform? Like, uh, the first scenario was just for petroleum and, and coal, right? But were you also able to look at just the income tax, right? Were we, are we able to do an analysis that um, the income tax in itself was a bad idea, that we could have passed the petroleum tax without passing uh, the income tax, and that would have been better off? Um, so is there that sort of, of analysis? And second, maybe as a follow-up of the paper, you mentioned that this is an ex ante simulation. Um, we're expecting the 2018 FIES sometime this year. So um, are you planning to do um, actual statistical um, analysis of the effect of, of trade so far? That's my question. On the, sorry, the first question was on the if, if, if we did uh, separate counterfactuals. So for, uh, yes, we did, but I, sorry, I don't remember the, the results uh, earlier now. But, uh, Would you like um, to comment on that, sent, uh, that, that idea that the EIQ um, sort of modeled the, the possible gains from the other portions of the tax reform? I mean, in terms of, of course, well, of course, in terms of government revenue, as, as was shown as a post from uh, Dr. Manassan's uh, presentation, the tax, I mean, in terms of tax state, that would actually be yeah, hamper revenues. But at this point, at least our computations of uh, uh, progressivity, and if you're talking about progressivity, uh, well, at least in the computations, I think. It's the, uh, it, it's the, uh, the personal income tax reforms, uh, by, just by itself, without the other internet taxes, is received as generally uh, progressive, at least in terms of the income there, so I, 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 I disagree with that. I mean, Personal income tax is progressive by itself. Mm -hmm. But I think the change in the personal income tax regime due to trade made the tax less progressive. So, so, so per se, individual income tax is progressive. Pero yung change because I had benefit dun sa change na yon in relative terms are those in the upper decile. It made the tax less progress. So, so that's, that's, that's my point. Well, that's so in terms of, I mean, if you talk about nominal, I mean, uh, the way that maybe we, we assume how we, we computed the change in the first income. I think I, I showed the table model for the greatest. In terms of percentage deductions, it's the lowest. Uh, that in country is still a good benefit. But uh, maybe you have... No, no, it's, it's very simple. How can the poor benefit? The poor to start with, the very poor, don't do not pay tax. So, paano sila makaka-benefit to sa reduction with tax? Uh, minimum wage earners, to start with, they pay zero tax under the old regime. Yes, I But you know, what, what we did, uh, assumption on that in terms of computing the tax rates for each of the income peasants is we make some assumptions on what these different households actually are. And then we assume uh, a certain uh, percentage are entrepreneurial or, or uh, get their income from entrepreneurial or wage earners. So, uh, of course, part of the change in nominal fee is very low. Uh, uh, part of the But, uh, but, but we'll see some in the lower income base size also paying some sort of, I mean, at least in our computation of the uh, price, uh, we see some uh, households that, that, that pay. Not, not, not all maybe are. Uh, I, yeah. So if you actually, uh, well, anyway, what we use is the FIE. Yeah. And if you use the FIE, lahat sila kinukumpipan yung ang tax. 
those belonging to the poorest there's a in fact at some point we were doing this uh, not just their size, but now it's quantized. It's going to be tax because it's going to be start to be. But in the whole, when you look at the pagmilinya mo sila from 1 to 10 their size, Ang gamers na dito sa bab, nasa highest income. Oh, and then you combine that with the increasing prices. Uh, I, I don't know. I, thank you for your views. <laughs> and thank you for the question. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> Sorry, ma'am. Not to prolong the discussion on the PAD. Um, but as, of course, those who are exempt, and that's one of the consequences of having exemptions or exempting certain sectors and not having the entire tax system at home. When we did, again, the, the, the um, tax reform, so as the past administration, we already knew that, of course, those who are already exempted, like the minimum wage earners, will definitely not benefit. And those who are in the informal economy also who are not captured by the tax system, especially those who are not paying the personal income tax, will not benefit uh, in, for whatever reason that they don't want to be in the, in the tax system. So what we're looking at lately is the 500,000 on the top tax bracket. If we, rem if we remember, 500,000 already is before, is like the top income. But right now, what is 500,000? It's the middle income. So yung nilereklamo nila na ang pinagawa niya po ay 32%. So, <clears throat> nung pinagawa po natin siya sa 25, eh, talaga po malaki yung kanyang benefit. But they are not the highest kung kang desay. So, para in-adjust din natin yung income, para maging middle income, mas mag-benefit. Can I agree on that point? The, the middle income gains. But saying the middle class gains is different from saying the poor benefit. I, I think I don't, I don't disagree now. Siguro, to me, the biggest gainers here are the millennials living with their parents, paying individual income tax, earning. Uh, 500,000. <laughs> 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 thank you for the clarification and Dr. discussion to bring in uh, recent developments so, which uh, have to do with uh, taxation as a, as a policy. Uh, just uh, a few observations. Uh, number one, I noticed uh, that uh, the tax uh, reform uh, program is not uh, in the agenda no, of the present uh, no, preparations for the national election. In other words, uh, I don't see it in any advertisement or, or in our public debate on where uh, the senatorial candidates, for instance, uh, feel uh, with respect to the future of uh, tax reform. Uh, second, uh, I think we are all aware now that, this, uh, that the local governments have won their fight uh, at the Supreme Court with respect to the inclusion of all uh, Revenue collections, you know, regardless of the cost of collection in their era. And then, uh, third, uh, there is uh, this uh, good development about relating tax reform to public health. You know? But there is none on taxation and public education. In fact, in the case of public education, I don't know 
what is uh, its uh, net effect, particularly with uh, uh, private uh, tertiary uh, institutions, you know, given the subsidy that is uh, going to be given, I think amounting to 50 billion for uh, for SUCs, you know. So I I want to raise uh, the question: How are this going to uh, impact on the next phases of the tax reform program? Then may I add also that if uh, in China, as uh, some partners uh, uh, called it against uh, a vote for the Senate, there might also be uh, a, a fresh impetus on uh, the uh, this, uh, on the this, what they call this uh, reform, uh, this uh, advanced uh, stage of decentralization, federalism, federalism. So these are uh, new, uh, new developments so, which have uh, immediate impact on the future of tax reform in the second uh, semester. And I'd like to raise particularly to our colleagues at the Department of Finance and DBM. I don't time not to DBM later. On uh, how are these uh, influencing you know, your internal discussions with respect to the shape of the uh, 2020 GAA? And I would like to ask what is the assumption with respect to the increase in revenues in the 2020 GAA and whether this adds the point being raised by the Department of Finance that uh, in fact uh, the collections are better than targeted. So I'd like to get uh, some feedback on these developments, particularly those uh, shaping uh, fiscal policy and especially the Department of Finance. Okay, so any reaction? Uh, yeah, yeah. There are many. Yes, a lot of, uh, Dr. Luke, you raised uh, several questions. And, uh, sir, would you like to address that to our, our colleagues from the DOF and the, sure. and the DBM? The, yung tanong ko dun sa Department of Finance is, uh, what modifications uh, are being thought about no? with uh, respect to the uh, next phases of the tax reform program, given this uh, recent development? Yes, ma'am. Now, would you like to, to uh, Maybe before you answer, answer? that, uh, let me uh, check the chat. Uh, 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 what is the impact of the tax reform so far on uh, educational institutions, especially the private ones? Okay. First, private ones, you know, the, the public uh, probably, uh, I don't know what, what is the uh, public as a policy with respect to payment of taxes by issues. Is that exactly? Uh,
because you said, oh, may, may link between tax reform and health, pero wala sa education. And, and what we see in three is when you look at the next to the last section, uh, article the intersection, is all is this long list of what it will be spent on experts and this, experts and that, uh, this pro funding this program and that, which is almost akin, very much akin to earmarking. Uh, I know na from the perspective of, you know, Acer had helped a lot dun sa syntax law na linking health with taxation of uh, cigarette products, taxation of alcoholic products, made, making that link na, na pasa yung syntax law. Ang, ang, but moving forward, I really wish that we move away from earmarking as a policy. I, I know na mahirap gawin yun kasi mas madaling ibenta yung tax changes when you link it. Ah, ganas tayo natin dito, free college education, ganas tayo natin dito. But, but at some point, dagdag tayo ng dagdag ng pera to certain sectors, the bottom line is, nababawasan yung iba. Case in point. Hindi mo naman pwedeng sabihin na train lang ang may kasalanan. But, case in point. 2019 budget proposal of DepEd was cut in favor of tertiary education. Is that good? Is that bad? Kasi, yeah, sige, funded ang higher education, pero kung hindi mo nadala yung mga bata na mahihirap dito sa basic, na makagraduate ng high school, sino ang pupunta sa kolehiyo? Yung in the first place can afford to pay for college. Diba? But I know. <laughs> so, hindi lang yun kasi train, it's, it's the whole uh, financing, public financing policy. Uh, can we uh, can we uh, get a letter from the uh, on the shape of the 2020 proposal? Uh, uh, sir, as for 2020, at saka yung revenue. Good afternoon po, I'm Kevin from the BM. Uh, sir, regarding po din sa concern nyo, yung sa about sa GGA for 2020, tapos na po na release na po natin yeah, right. yung budget priorities framework natin. And we're currently uh, positioning po sa year one estimate sa part year two. Uh, sa ngayon po parang nagko-compete pa rin po yung DBM ng forward estimates po uh, as we wait po for other agencies po to submit their proposals. Tapos po uh, regarding po dun sa concern nyo yun po sa federalism, uh, yung DBM rate po nagkakaroon na rin po siya ng interagency committees po to discuss the subject. Uh, Tingnan na rin po kung ano yung pwede maging impacts nun uh, going forward regarding sa budgeting po natin. As for the Mandanas case po, recently lang po kasing nagkaroon po ng SC ruling, uh, pero po ang legal service po namin ay hihintay po muna masabit sa amin yung actual decision before pursuing any legal, legal remedies po. Uh, Titingnan po kung ano po pwede gawin. Uh, pero po as for our initial estimates for last year, around 190 billion po kasi yung magiging impact niya on 2019-2019. Tapos po, uh, since po na-release na po yung SEO, yung baka po meron po bagong compute. So, yung interagency po for that, maging uh, siguro, kasama po yung DLGF po. Sila rin po kasi yung kasama po namin ng compute. Interagency, 
the compromise of Supreme Court but they extended yes. the effectivity. Yung prospective in uh, ruling po siya. So, bali po 2022 20, pa po magsastart bayanan po. Uh, tapos 2019 po yung magiging reference here po natin for BIR and UC collections. So, it will be in the next administration? Ah, yes po. Nice. <laughs> Thank you for that. It's a compromise. Yes. Can we hear from our friends? Uh, from our uh, from the OF, please. I think the question at the OF is uh, what the lessons have been learned, you know, uh, from all these developments uh, in respect of the future, uh, the further phases uh, that's coming uh, in the next. Uh, uh, in terms of on the tax reform, the entire agenda, the progressive tax reform. Um, of course, it's it's um. It has a, a, the, the main factor that uh, we will have to consider when it comes to what's going to be pushed through or whatnot. It's there already. They already asked our legislators, they already filed the bills. But then again, we, we are entering into a new Congress, therefore, it needs to be, these things to be filed. No? Um, but again, we see now the priorities because, for example, uh, the tobacco and the alcohol excise is on the supposedly package, the fifth package, or the other, the last package of the DOF tax reform. And yet, now we have the second package, which is, which is the corporate income tax and the fiscal incentives uh, reform. Uh, interestingly, you could question you on the um, educational institutions. Uh, I think you already know that the private educational institutions are taxed at a lower rate Unlike SUCs, they don't have the income tax. But they have a tax expenditure fund for SUCs to cover their importation and other taxes, tax obligations. But for private education institutions, they have a reduced rate of 10%. It depends on the tax code, so there is a qualification for them. I think the real question, that, or the real concern that we would have to find out is what is happening, what is the impact of these tax concessions to the educational institution? Because if it's not effective, then maybe iba po yung form of government subsidy na kailangan natin ibigisan so, What are the lessons learned? Um, so far, we're looking how we crafted, we're crafting the, the all of the packages. But so far, um, sinusunod pa rin po namin yung package 2, then package 3, package 4. And of course, we have to be prepared. Like, for example, ang push po ngayon, again, is on the excise on alcohol and tobacco. So we have to be fully prepared for that. Come um, this um, resumption. Kasi yun po yung nakikita namin na papapas. So it, it really depends. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Sige po. Kasi, ang projection na sa traba. Projected, ano po? Saan siya papunta? Saan siya papunta? Package 2. Apo. We're still optimistic kasi hindi pa naman tapos yung 2019. So, we're still going to get as much, we wanted to push for as much as what can be uh, um, uh, passed by Congress. So it's, you're talking it's, of the next Congress? Yes, this next Congress, 18th Congress. Oh. Oh, kasi wala na rin pong time. Oh, okay. So, hindi na rin siya kaya. And um, we all know that in Senate, hindi na rin din po siya na pass, na approval for the reading. So, wala na rin tayong time. Um, we just have to uh, look again, to say to review, because um, because of what had transpired when the bill was being heard in the lower house. And kung saan siya papunta, yung gusto po namin, hindi kaya package pa rin, yung trabaho itself. Is uh, sana mga mga po. Pero kung hindi, we also have to, again, utilize, fully utilize whatever we can on the bill. Thank you for the information. Someone from the back.
Uh, good afternoon, I'm JC Kurumbayan from the FEU Public Policy Center and Drafter. So I have, uh, uh, first of all, I wanted to thank Kate and the two presenters for have, or organizing this talk. Um, because as Dr. Manasson said, we're not talking about dream enough uh, in, this, uh, in this election season. So it's nice to have uh, forums like this. Now I have three questions. Um, first, uh, the effect of dream and poverty. So a few, uh, maybe last week, uh, PSA released the latest poverty data. There was a 6.6 percentage um, 6 point reduction in the poverty incidence among the population from 2015 to 2018. Uh, I was just wondering uh, um, how different that would be um, because of training. I mean, um, would the reduction in poverty in those three years, be, would that have been larger had it not been for training? Because there's a, well, based at least on the paper of Dr. Guanyu, there's a positive effect of um, uh, the training law on poverty incidents. So I was wondering uh, how that would factor in. Now, second, um, the effect of uh, the train on inequality. Demand. So as Dr. Manasson said, um, it's not so clear that the train is actually progressive. And that uh, last year, uh, for the poorest six deciles, um, sabi ni Dr. Manasson, ito ang kawawa talaga. Um, even if you just consider your uh, personal income taxes. So I was just wondering whether, how permanent these effects are, or are these just temporary effects on inequality? I mean, what are the broader implications of training on the overall inequality picture in the country? Um, are we just looking at uh, uh, are, uh, a parang regressive siya in the short term or medium term, or is it more long lasting than that? Now, third, um, I believe that PITS is actually developing a comprehensive macroeconometric uh, model um, uh, that's never been done before, I mean, including all sectors in the economy, or as many sectors as possible. I was wondering if you're going to do a follow-up study, I mean, anyone is uh, uh, going to do a follow-up um, on train, incorporating train using that uh, novel model. So I was just curious whether um, this would be, train would be part of that. Okay. Thank you for the question. So, I would like to. The first question is uh, the effect of train on poverty, and uh, it's effect, the second one is the effect of train on, in, on inequality, and the third one is is uh, if PACE will uh, still do further studies on train. So, may I ask the president of the third question? <laughs> Would you like to answer it now, ma'am? Yeah. Actually, that's one of the first policy simulations that will be done. Um, that's actually the first policy simulation that will be done using the, the macro model. So uh, I'm looking at uh, the team working on it. And um, so probably um, by middle of this year, uh, we'll be able to come up with the uh, simulation results. For the first question, effect on uh, poverty, uh, Mom Chat, would you like to? I want to go to the please. I think that the simulation results that we have are actually in the end game. I mean, it's not, it's not really short time. It's what's happening hopefully by the end. So, according to the simulations, there's an increase, right? especially because of the impact of the indirect access. Uh, but and again, from our simulations, um, I if the unconditional cash transfers are uh, Here, we assume that uh, all households uh, in the lowest uh, five income lessons actually uh, uh, are provided with the transfer. Um, Sir, how about the effect on um, inequality? So, maybe your calculate the uh, Gini index. But essentially, ano naman, uh, what it shows is that there's a adverse effect on the, uh, the, the sectors that we identified are the bottom uh, of the It shows that. Uh, at least from our calculation of the being equivalent variation as, as you've seen, but negative, you know, because you know, at least ending calculated, it is negative for the 
lower sense seven income less size and what the gains are done first. Thank you so much uh, for the last question. Yes, just one comment. Okay. Um, just uh, one comment. Well, um, it, is actually, it is actually the end game uh, estimation. Um, more so that we need to include the, the spending on infrastructure, even if it's just part of the, uh, even not the whole deal, 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 but at least what is uh, explicitly stated in train, if you're looking at uh, train as a, as a whole. Um, you know, thank you. Yes, the question is on the and poverty, and perhaps more so on inequality. Is it uh, a short term or a longer term? If, if you just look at the tax side, uh, you, other things being equal given what we have now. Long term yun, di ba? But, but, and I, I agree with Mitch, na when you look at this thing, you look, should look at the whole fiscal program. So it's tax plus expenditures. And, 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 and I think what is incumbent on policy makers FDBN as well as uh, the implementing agencies and departments is to actually ensure that expenditures will compensate, not just yung unconditional cash transfers na parang you know, compensate mo yung negative tax ano, take yung actual tax but more so on build, build, build more so on even the social sectors may be. Na make sure na kung nakawawa man yung mahirap dito sa tax reform, na sila ay matutulungan ng expenditure side. Uh, sabi nga nila, yun yung know, natuhiling sa krise, make expenditures work for the poor. Uh, make it more inclusive yung investments. Um, Alam natin ngayon sa 2018, 2019, wala pa tayo, wala pa yan talaga eh. Hindi mo pa makikita yun. Konti pa lang talaga yun. Build sa infrastructure side and on the social sector side, uh, medyo, in my mind, personal view lang, na I would say the the spending on the social sector has been education along, I would say, less progressive than what it used to be. Okay, guys, I think I'm gonna say so um and then just a disclaimer. Kanina na sabi ko wala akong pakialam sa poverty. No, that that's not what I meant exactly. It's just that that's not my area of expertise. So last question. Okay, there being none, maybe hear a couple of words from the speakers. Doctor Juan, you would you like to say something? Wala. Okay, okay. Okay, so that concludes our uh, seminar today and uh, thank you all for coming but before we let you go uh, we may request all the uh, participants to please fill up the evaluation forms and, and uh, give it to our secretaries